All right, so this is what we've got so far. A lot of comments, not too much happening, it's mostly comments. But um, what we want to do here is, uh, just for your information, everything that is not a comment is known as a statement. So comments are comments, and the others are statements. So I suppose you could say non-comment code is a statement. And obviously, comment code is a comment. So they just have specific names, comments and statements. And the reason we have all of this sort of vocabulary is that once you get into a particular field and it has its own jargon and terminology, you are able to better communicate with other people that also know that jargon. So when we try to say, yeah, just type that thing. Well, thing doesn't mean anything. <coughs> type that statement. Type that method. Use this object and update its property. You know, as we use the proper terminology, we can communicate. So as we learn these things, they will hopefully stick. But we've just got comments and statements. Comments are obvious, and statement is everything else. So what we're going to do is write more statements. Uh, what we're going to do, one of the big concepts that we deal with in most programming languages, including JavaScript, is uh, dealing with variables. So in a sense, a variable is a container. Just like I've got this container here, this little circular thing, this contains things, and it can contain a variety of things, variable objects, various things, pencils and pens and everything. So this has got a variable with stuff inside. We can create those same sort of things, those objects inside of JavaScript. And so we'll see here on the next screen. We will not always do something dot something because some of these commands are... Um, you don't have to be so explicit for some of these statements. They are assumed at some points, such as this. Uh, we're going to write this. VAR. VAR is our keyword, is our statement uh, to create a variable, to create a container. So we'll type VAR space. And we'll see that a variable can contain different kinds of data. So this variable is going to contain something. And what we're doing here is declaring a variable. We're creating a variable. And a variable needs a name. This little container here um, has a name. It's, it's my black tube, let's say. It's got a name. So we're creating a variable, and we can give this any name we want. We'll say my score. And we're kind of using the same syntax from CSS in that there's if there's any text or named elements, that have more than one word, we run them together. We cannot use spaces. And I'm using intercaps, or camel caps, so a key, uh, capital letter inside of the word. Uh, you could also do my underscore score, or my, under, or my score. But we'll keep using the same syntax, capital letter in between, my score, and then semicolon. We've declared a variable. We've created a variable. Let's say this is a game that keeps track of the score. So this object, this container, will keep track of that score. As I get more points, as I lose points, as I get a high score, whatever, it can keep track of things. I've de declared the variable, but it doesn't have any value. So next line. We'll say my score. And, and capitalization is highly important, because if I try to write this and to add a, a points in there, I'll get a syntax error. I will get a JavaScript error in the console that tells me something's wrong. I don't know what my score is. But wait a minute, my score is right there. Why doesn't it know what my score is? No capital letter. So however you write or however you name your variables and everything in JavaScript, make sure that it has the same case. I have this container. I'm going to put a number inside of it. And so uh, 
the syntax of JavaScript is then space equals, and then a number. Let's say when we start off the game brand new, we have zero points. So we'll do zero, semicolon. And space is critical. Technically, no. We can run these together with no spaces, but just for us to read it a little easier, I am putting spaces in. And that's a zero, not an O. Although our variable could store an O. We'll get to that. But we've declared a variable, and then we've um, assigned the variable a value. We've put a value in the variable. If, if I were to save and run this, don't do it yet, nothing happens, nothing shows up in the console, because we've created a, a variable, we've created an object, but we didn't do anything with it. Next line. Console.log, open close parentheses, my score. I didn't write quotes here. Save it and launch it. Let's see the result in the console. It won't be wrong to put quotes, but it's not what we want. I'll explain why in a moment. Go ahead and um, save and run that. Remember, F12 can bring up the console quicker. The console so then say zero. If your console instead says my score, that's why I said no quotes. If I add quotes, it says my score. So in quotes, it's literally writing the name of the variable instead of what's inside of the variable. Um, this is a literal string. This is show in the console this exactly in quotes. So it showed the name of the variable. Without quotes, it's no longer a string. It's no longer a literal, a literal string. It is a value inside of the variable, which is zero. So let's do this. We've got console.log, my score. Copy that line and paste it on the next line. But then this time, put it in quotes. So there's one version of it with no quotes and one version of it with quotes. So we're just seeing exactly what I mentioned a moment ago. It's displaying that. Um, so the first the first one here, line uh, 25, let's add a comment here. This is um, a numeric data type. And this second one is a string data type. Question? Right here. It does not matter. I'm just pressing tab so that these two line up, just to make it look big. It doesn't matter at all. Uh, usually spaces matter inside of the quotes. Outside of the quotes, usually they don't unless I mention it. So here I'm just pressing tab to line these up nicely. And I press space there for no reason, just to make it line up. Inside the quotes it would matter. Um, you don't want spaces between those slashes, however. Look at that. That's not going to work. Numeric data type, string data type. Uh, numeric type is basically a number, which can be, uh, you know, a whole number, a fractional number, um, positive numbers, negative numbers, numbers, numeric. Uh, and then the second one is a string, which is basically words. Uh, text. 
You can. You can put two parameters in the same uh, in the same console log in the same method. We can. We'll do that in a moment. Uh, although um, you might not think it works exactly how you think, but we will. Um, so here we've created a variable, we've filled it with something, we've assigned a value to it, and here we're displaying the value, and here we're displaying the string. What's in the container and the name of the container. We can combine the two uh, next. We'll do console.log, open close parentheses. And this time what I wanted to do is display in my console, I wanted to say I wanted to say that numeric data is this, and string data is this, because those comments only show up in the console. But I wanted to say those words. Numeric data type equals this, and string data type equals that. So first of all, in quotes, we will write numeric data type colon. And that colon is only there because it's in quotes, so that it looks like a, a statement that says you know, this colon, that. It's, that colon is not there for any sort of JavaScript command. It's just there for visual. So I want to display a string and a numeric. So after the quote, but still inside of the parentheses, space, plus symbol, space, my score. No quotes. So this in the console log should display the words, the string, numeric data type, in quotes, and also the numeric data type, what's inside that variable, because of that plus. Go ahead and save it and launch it to see the result. Numeric data type 0. It said the words numeric data type and the value 0. It looks a little cramped here, doesn't it? This 0 is right next to the colon. I would like a little space there, like I normally would see. This is what I'm saying, that these spaces matter when you're in your quotes, because here I have no space after the colon. If I add a space, then I get a space there. So even though it's empty, if I add 10 spaces here, they would show up there as 10 spaces in the console uh, in the quotes. So I added a space after the colon, and that gave me a little bit of breathing room between that string and that numeric data type. So subtle things. Let's do the same thing just for completeness. On the next line, I wanted to display string data type. And, I, and now I know that I'm going to need a space after that colon. And then we'll put my score in quotes. So that's a string data type, and it displays literally my score, not the value in my score. String data type, my score. Question? I, I was about to say, thanks for reminding me. If at any point, let's say you had 10 lines of JavaScript that worked, and then on your 11th line you wrote it wrong, suddenly all your previous lines deactivate. 
So that's a little bit of annoying, but that's how JavaScript works. When any one JavaScript command doesn't work, it, it basically deactivates all of your JavaScript. Okay, so let's continue with the idea of having this score. Uh, let's say through a bunch of other code. Um, now the, the player is starting to get points. So maybe my score is the starting, uh, the starting points, and maybe I use my score later on to determine a high score. Well, I would need another variable for the current score, let's say. Uh, and maybe I need another error, uh, I mean another variable for player 2's score. So I can create multiple variables to um, to keep track of all of this. So let's do the next line. We'll do VAR again. And we could have brand new variables defined like that. Don't do this yet, but you can have a bunch of new variables on their own line like that. But actually, we can define multiple variables at once with commas. So we use the var keyword statement once and then we make a variable comma make another variable comma make another variable that'll work as well instead of var 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 and having a bunch of stuff uh, so we'll say we're, we'll create var uh, current score comma p2 score player 2 score semicolon so now I said I'm done I've created two variables at once and that comma will <coughs> That comma will let me create more than one. And then what I could have done is current score equals, let's say I have 12 points so far, and player 2 has 13. Other code would have actually been doing this, but I'm just saying, let's put some values into these, 
into these um, values into these variables. Let's back up a little bit. Let's say we've got on line uh, 24, let's say actually we start off with one point. Go back to my score, the original my score. Instead of zero, let's just say we start off with one point. On the next line, We'll say my score equals current score. We can do this as well. We've assigned over here uh, the value 12 to current score. So over here, if I were to do console.log my score, will I get 1? Will I get 12 or will I get 13? 12. Let's find out. Console.log my score. I don't need to make it be pretty, I just want it to show me that number. And by making it pretty, I mean putting in a string beforehand to tell me in my console what is this number. Because this will just, this statement will simply just spit out whatever is in that variable without any meaning to it. And as a quick and dirty test, this is fine. But as I get more complex with more code, I often want to add some sort of string to my console output to tell me what it should display. So if you voted for 1, you're wrong. If you voted for 13, you're wrong. What was correct was a 12. The output is 12. It took what was inside of 12 and replaced what was inside of my score. So the equals operator here, this equals here, basically dumps out whatever the original variable had and fills it with whatever's on the right side. So you can think of equals as take what's on the right side and put it into what's on the left side. Remove whatever was there originally. So equals here has some different meaning than 1 plus 1 equals 2 in a regular arithmetic. In, in JavaScript, in most programming languages, equal is an assignment operator, which means assign this to this. Take this, put it into this, ignore what was originally there. Delete it and put the new value. Current score. So now what my score has is 12, which is what was inside of current score. Let's do this. Let's back up. Let's comment out that line. <coughs> comment out code deactivates code. You don't have to run it. I, I did it for us. I commented out that line. I saved it. I ran it. And now it says 1. So just showing you. It's ignored. Because what I want to do instead is let's write that line again. My score. But this time plus equals current score, semicolon. And I'll save and run that. Check that result. So one little thing made a big difference. My score plus equals no space here. No space between the plus and the equals. My score plus equals current score. Output to the console, 13. So in that case, it did take what, what my score originally had, 1, and it added arithmetically uh, current score, which was 12. 12 plus 1, 13. So equals will replace the existing value, plus equals will add to it. Um, here mathematically, but we can also add words together, as we'll see later. Yes? 
Um, just to make sure my logic is correct, let's say I wanted to make a variable called total score. Mm -hmm. I could make total score equal to P2 score plus my score, as long as I don't include the quotation marks. And those variables still have numbers. They should just add together when I have the console log call up total score, correct? Yes. So if you had a new variable, what did you call it? Total score? Yes. Total score equals current score and P2 score. Yes, we can add them both up equals and it would put into current score the latest total score, like regular numbers. Uh, we can actually do that um, because it will add what's inside of the variables and then the result would be would be output. Uh, we can try that. So uh, let's go back to line 29. We've declared the variable current score, p2 score. Let's add a comma before the end of the semicolon and call it total score. This would be the total score of player 2 and current score. Uh, so we can go to the next line here and write total score equals uh, current score plus p2 score. Console.log total score. So in this case, it is working a bit more like arithmetic uh, plus in that whatever number this is plus whatever that number is now gets put into total score, which in the beginning we created but added no value. Now it has a value. And so if you do console log output, what are we going to get? 25. 12 plus 13. Question. What's your y score plus equals current score? Okay. 25. My score. Could you equally have done my score equals my score plus current score? Let me write it down here. So you said my score equals uh -huh. my score plus current score. Is that equivalent to the line you want to talk about? This one up here? Yes, um, good point. If you, if you had a little experience with other languages, perhaps, uh, what we've got here is equivalent. Um, we've got my score equals take the current, take my score and add current score and then put it into my score. This whole line right here can be shortened into that. Plus, so that's what you would test the way you normally do that kind of. Either way, Either way would work. There's no correct way, uh, really, but that one is a little shorter. A little shorthand, save a few bytes. You do that several thousand times in your app, you save megabytes. Uh, so this is a shorthand. Let me make a comment here. Shorthand for line 36. Longhand for line 33. Well, not only can we work with numbers, adding numbers and then displaying them on the console. Remember, this is all on the console. We could have also been doing document.write. This would also work. It would display this stuff on screen. Right now we're in the console. The console is going to be very useful for us to, to do work that we don't want displayed right away on screen to the user. Um, so we've been working with numbers. 
we're seeing that the plus can add numbers together and then put that value into a variable and then display the variable. We're seeing that quotes will give us a string, which is text. Well, variables, as, as we saw back on line 26, for example, um, we can hold also um, names, uh, words, and all of that. So let's say we're going to create a variable that will hold the user's name, uh, you know, their initials. When, when you get the high score, you put your initials. So let's say we go to the next line, do VAR, we're initializing a variable, we're creating a variable, we'll call it, uh, let's try P1 name. But what I can do for another shorthand, notice on the previous line 30 and 31, I created the variable and then on the next line I filled it with a value or I assigned a value. Shorthand is that I can create a value and I can at the same time equals what to put in the variable. And because names are not numbers, they're strings, I have to put it in quotes. Open quote, end quote, semicolon, because the statement ends. And in the quotes, let's put your initials, or mine if you want. So player one's name is BMC, whatever your initials are. So we're creating it, we're initializing it, and we're assigning it, we're putting that in that as at the moment we create it. That would have been equivalent to, don't write this, but it would have been equivalent to p1 name semicolon p1 <coughs> name equals vmc. Same thing. Those two lines right there are the exact same as that one line there. So there's very shortcuts in JavaScript uh, that we'll see. So and all the, the ways we've done it in different ways at the top, uh, we had shortcuts. We could also do the same sort of thing in that um, we up here created three of them at once with, with commas. We could string that all together. We could have current score equals 12 comma, p2 score equals 13 comma, total score equals whatever, uh, separated by commas. But here is a quick way to create and assign a variable. Yes. On screen, yeah. Um, because we're specifically accessing the console object and using the method log that basically says show this in the console. If we have been doing for any of these, if we have been doing document.write, it would write it on screen. And so we've created a variable, this time with a string and a name. This time. Um, yes? Line 38 here? Well, those are, that's just output to take out to the, to the developer's console. As I write my app, I might not need to display stuff on screen. I might have to do mathematical calculations, and I don't want that to clutter up my screen. I can go to the console. It's not visible by the regular user. Mm -hmm. And so this is sort of like a temporary kind of, in a sense, scratch pad to figure things out. And then once it's ready, I could output it out screen. Or I could have various checks for myself. Is this working so far if I get a certain message in my console? If it is, then I can proceed with my code. If I get an error message, then I have to stop and fix it. You can comment them out. You can still leave them there and comment them out, and then nothing shows up in the console. It's still in the code. Therefore, if you come back to it a month later, this stuff is still here, and then it might help you. Or you can take it out to free up a few bytes and kilobytes and megabytes, because everything here does take up space, as in memory-wise and file size wise and so. So there is something to be said about cleaning all of that out. You could have a production version ready to publish which has all comments out, removed, and then there's a development version with all comments still in. Obviously maintaining two code bases which is more effort. But that's up to you. Short answer. It's up to you to take them out or not. 
let's say because we've been playing a lot with the console, but just to, for fun and to mix it up again, document.write p1 name. I didn't put quotes, and if you see the result, it has what's inside of the variable displayed. Well, I want my name to be big and bold and important looking. What tag allows us to do that? H1. So, what if we wrote here h1 slash h1? That would make sense, kind of, but looking at the previous examples of doing document.write might give you pause. Well, let's see the result anyway. Yes, a heading one tag makes uh, text appear big and bold. So this seems to be what I would write, logically, perhaps. But if I save it and run it, I get nothing on screen. Check your console. Syntax error. Expected expression. Got angle bracket. So syntax errors, are, or other kinds of errors, are, are things that could show up in the console. That's another reason to look at the console. So we've got some sort of error here. And unfortunately, sometimes these error messages are not that user-friendly. Not even user-friendly, developer-friendly. They're not that explanatory. What, what error did I do? What, what's my problem? And notice everything, as I said previously, one, long, one wrong line of JavaScript and suddenly everything shuts down. So everything else that I had done previously, nothing shows up on screen, nothing else shows up in the console. But if you notice, your developer console here is going to give you some sort of weird message. And hopefully what might be more helpful is if you look on the edge here, it's saying, look in your file, September 15th, line 39, column 18. Line 39, column 18. Notepad++ tells you lines and columns. Actually, line 18 is just right in the middle of the word document, I guess. But line 39, something's wrong here. That's another purpose of the developer console. It'll give you a weird error, and sometimes it's a helpful uh, sounding error. But what often will help you is what line number did this happen, and maybe column number will help you, but I, the, the line number is the first number here. Something's wrong with line 39. OK, well, also Notepad sort of shows me why is this blue and that is not blue. Okay, logically from what I've done previously with document write, maybe I should put quotes here. Okay, it's no longer blue, it kind of looks like my other one. Okay, let me try that. Put quotes around this whole statement inside of the parentheses. Open quote, end quote, inside of the open parentheses, close parentheses, inside of the document, inside of the write method of the document object. What's the result? Look at that. It, it quoted it. It's a variable name, not the name VMC. OK. Yes. OK, let's check our code here. So what's happening here is if the example of why I say computers are dumb. I'm not worried about them taking over the world, because if we can't handle this thing, it's not going to take over the world. So it's doing literally what we're asking it to do. So we need to do a little bit more to tell it what we really need.
things. So this is what I'm saying that um, we need to tell it exactly what we want. Mentally, what I want is I want it to display my name in big bold letters, the value in the variable. But what it did was it just literally wrote that in big bold letters. So we have to be more specific. We need to do what we did back on lines 27 and 28 where we mixed strings and variables. Um, so we have to do this. Let me show you first and then we'll do it together because it, it'll look weird. Quotes here to display, and I'm missing my angle bracket, um, quotes here to to display literally h1, which gets rendered as valid code, plus then show what's in the variable, because I don't have any quotes, and then show the end of the h1 tag. In this case, plus is taking on a different meaning than the previous plus. The previous plus was add this number and add that number. Here, because now we're dealing with numeric data types, um, I'm, not, I'm sorry, we're dealing with string, a couple of different kinds of strings, the plus is doing something else known as concatenation, which is a fancy word to just say basically put this and then this next to it and then this next to it and then this next to it. So concatenation, put this on screen and then put this on screen and then put that on screen instead of adding it because you can't add words, really, you can add numbers. Here we're adding strings, putting it on screen with document.write. Question? So extra um, quotations is a literal thing. Mm -hmm. Why is it not displaying on the screen the actual angle brackets in the actual front? Because when the web browser gets to that, it actually sees them as valid code, and then it displays, it renders the code. It, takes that and translate it to be big and bold instead of literally displaying that. We'd have to do another little trick called escaping the characters or character escapes to make it literally display angle brackets, blah, blah, blah. Could it also be that um, since we already said at the top of the document that this is HTML, like when it gets tried to, when it tries to read it, it'll pick up the HTML because like JavaScript is nested in the HTML? It's related to that because, yes, we're saying write this on the document, and uh, this is an HTML document. So it's going to then take that, those tags, and then display them as a valid HTML. Uh, just to remind myself, I think we can do this. Don't do this yet, but I think we can do this. <clears throat> now we have to do something else. Yeah, we'll get back to that. So, yeah, we can make it actually display these, these, uh, these literally as that. But right now, it's going to take it as as valid code and then display it as valid code. So this is something also we're going to do, where we need to display various um, strings. This variable holds a string, but we want to see what's in the variable, not the name of the variable. So no quotes. This is a string. This is a string. So just put these strings together. Show them on screen. Document top right console.log uh, would have given us something similar. But now it displayed the name that we uh, created the variable here, and we then we, we initialized it, and then we assigned it, and then we displayed it. Let's put then together what we did at the end of the day last time. You remember we had an alert so that a message would pop up, but what was that other thing that made everyone gasp? Remember that login screen? Anyone remember that code, that statement? How to make that login screen pop up? It was prompt. Next line. We'll type prompt.
Okay, actually, specifically, just for completeness, window.prompt. We're accessing the window object, and there's differences between the document and the window and the console and the navigator. There's a lot of complexity. But uh, here we're doing window. Let's access the window object. Let's use the prompt method. And in this statement, then we add the parameter, login. So that should make a pop-up, a simple pop-up appear that says login. Notice we could have done it with simply prompt because this is what I'm saying that sometimes there are assumed objects. So just simply prompt would work. Technically window dot prompt is what's happening longhand. Prompt by itself is the shorthand. Um, and so here we're making a pop-up that asks you to log in. So what I want is that this pop-up happens I type in my name and it displays welcome, Victor. So if I save it and run it, right away it asks me, John, click OK. Why isn't it saying welcome, John? Because computers are dumb. We haven't told it. Do something with that. Display it on screen. Don't just let it, you know, uh, disappear. Do something with it. Capture that name and then display it on screen. So logically we have some code right in front of our faces that will let us do what I'm asking it to do. I want it to ask me my name, capture that, and display it on screen. We have the knowledge so far with everything we've done so far. A variable to hold the name and a method to display it on screen. So we have this and this. Let's say we wanted to reuse player1, a p1 name. We wanted to reuse that variable and then display it on screen. So let's um, rearrange our, well, not yet. Let's say here, um, let's do this. We've seen equals to assign something to a variable. We can do this to this whole method, this whole statement. We can do here on line 41, uh, line 40, p1 name equals window.prompt login. What that will do is make the make the pop-up happen, ask for the name, you click OK, and then that name that we wrote will then get stored in this variable. So copy line 39 and paste it exactly as is on line 41. So this document dot write, copy that whole line and paste it after the window dot prompt, and then save it and launch it. Sometimes the, the web browser is forgiving, but the semicolon really ends a statement. So perhaps right now when our programs are relatively simple, it doesn't matter. But as we get into more complex programs, sometimes that'll really hinder us if we don't end a statement. So basically this is the end of the statement. All right, so I'm going to try that again. Uh, save and run. It still says VMC there, but now I'm going to sign in as John. Click OK. John. And so you see that it showed the previous name. It waited for me. These over here are still waiting. I ignored them. It waited for me for my name. I typed the name, pressed OK, and then on screen it displayed the latest name. I'm reusing the variable p1 name. 
and this is also showing that it all goes in order. Two windows. If you copy the window dot prompt again, then it will pass you again. Okay, so um, it said VMC and then it said John uh, because this goes into the idea that this all runs in order. Every th command, every statement in JavaScript runs in order. So the, um, the web browser loads this document, starts from the top. So remember, as I said previously, it's going to read it top to bottom, left to right. It's going to reach a line and either CSS, either HTML, CSS, or JavaScript, it'll get to that line and read it from left to right. So it's going through this and looking at all of this stuff and doing all of this stuff. And then so there was a part here where we said, well, we created the variable, we initialized it, we assigned it, show it on screen. Then after that, we've got the P1 and the prompt, 
and then it waits for us so we see VMC in the back for a moment and then after we add our name then it displays it on screen again right there so it's just going to be in order and that's going to make more sense and be more important as we get more complex because think about this what if we have a box on screen that's going to show a person's name but inside of the the order of the code we are trying to make a pop-up box happen before a container exists on screen let's say I'm asking for the person's name here but there's no container on screen to show it yet so all our code is written properly but then the order of it really matters and it's the wrong order so I'm trying to display a name and an object that doesn't exist on screen yet that will happen sometimes one of the ways to avoid that is to do what we're doing here we've written all of our script at the end of our body before the end of the code inside the body before the end of the code because we could we could have written all of this script also in the head sometimes we see tutorials that do that in the head I could start the script block and write all of that script in the head but remember it goes in order so it would go from top to bottom try to run all of the script and if the JavaScript then says display this on screen in this h1 but it hasn't been created in the body yet you'll get an error even though all the code is correct if it doesn't quite make sense the point is often we'll get better results if our JavaScript is at the end of our document at the end of our HTML document so we'll write that then we'll take a break a comment here notice I've been mostly writing single line comments um, and we'll write best practice to add your JavaScript at the end of the body and at the end of the document and this applies for embedded JavaScript like we've been writing here and external JavaScript where we have all of this code written in a, in a different file called for example mycode.js we haven't done that yet and as I said previously with CSS it's also better to have for example mystyle.css have all your CSS um, selectors in a CSS file and then link that to your other 20 files and they will all inherit the same CSS same thing with JavaScript we could write all of this in a, C in a JS file and link this one JS file to our 20 HTML files and now they will all have that functionality we'll get to that right now we're still writing embedded uh, JavaScript in our HTML file yes is there a way of instead of just running it you mean like to jump to different parts? Yes, that has to do with the um, developer's console. It's a little off topic, but if you go to the developer's console, you have a debugger right here, and you can set breakpoints, and then that way you can have it step line by line by one to, ch to check exactly what's going on. We will look at that a little later, but this is our debugger. And it's part of the the, what, the web browser. Yes. No, no, no. I, w I was saying another way to do it is to put it in the head tags. And on, and on other tutorials or books or, or whatever, you might see your code in the head block. I'm not saying it's better. I'm saying that's another way to do it. But perhaps better to avoid some issues is to put it at the end of your body instead. Because we can have something else running at the end. I could have other stuff happening here in body, like we haven't gotten here yet, but we can have an input box.
so we're getting ahead of ourselves, but we can do an input box here and we can type something in there. And if that is written at other and in, in some other part of the code, it might then conflict with this, this JavaScript if it's above or below it and so forth. So we'll get to that. So uh, so pay no attention to that. Um, let's uh, take our next break when we come back. Everything that we've been doing so far has just happened automatically as soon as the page loads. We're going to get back to the concept of triggers because all of this has just been happening right away. I want a trigger. I want a button press to make something happen in JavaScript. I want a trigger. So it's 8.02. We'll be back at 8.12 and we'll go on. Uh, usually what I do when we get this far I'm going to put a copy of my code so far in the network folder in case you want it, and then of course at the end of the day. So we'll be back at 8.13 and we'll go on.